those of you that have very bad memories and were in here earlier on, uh, my name is Mark Lim. This time I'm presenting on behalf of a colleague of mine, um, uh, Jack Highland. Jack works in the DCU library and is part of a great uh, library support team that we have in DCU. We're very lucky to have him. Um, <clears throat> but our library services provide excellent support for students. They both have drop-in clinics, uh, writing clinics, all sorts of things, but they also have a suite of e-learning tools um, that they have developed. And with the power of technology, it should actually be automatically tweeted in the next two, two minutes, a link to those resources. And if you do, I couldn't link directly to the bit on the bottom of the page where the resources are, but if you do scroll to the bottom of the page, you will get free access to that. They're built on Storyline, so if you're interested, we can send you the raw files and you can customize them for your own institution. <coughs> um, and of course, if you want to contact Jack directly, he's on uh, at Highland Jack there with the, the, the name down the bottom. So is our training working? I mentioned earlier on uh, that our staff do an awful lot of training, both lectures, but, but mainly the library staff do an excellent uh, set of training on uh, citation and referencing. And I will preface this by, and I was saying this to Mary earlier on, when I, give, when I go to conferences, I get uh, loads of great ideas from, from all the different bits and pieces, but I'm very conscious of the fact that I'm always hearing the best. I'm always hearing the stuff that goes on that worked really well, and you never talk about the stuff that didn't really work, right? So I've decided to put my money where my mouth is and now show you a presentation which doesn't work, all right? So I tried this but, that's what the name is going to be. Now, I will also say, and hopefully we'll be able to put a positive spin on this, but let's just say the results didn't turn out the way we wanted them to, and we can talk about that later on. So, <clears throat> what are we going to talk about? Um, I'll give you a, a brief uh, background to, to, to uh, what we did, um, the, how we used Moodle to do what we did, and the analysis that we've got. So, this is, I'm very conscious of the fact I'm, I'm uh, keeping from you guys from coffee, and it's the last session of the day, or close to the last session of the day, so I'll cut out all the James Bond references and move straight into the topic, right? Try to get there as much as possible. Um, and the conclusions, hopefully you'll help me draw some conclusions later on. So this is Jack. Jack has, uh, he's, a, he's the business uh, library representative, has a rake of help guides and resources for staff and for students. And uh, what he wanted to do was he said, well, is my stuff making a difference? So what he did was he did this e-learning resource, the team, I can't just say it was just Jack, um, the team, uh, compiled these learning resources, and they had quizzes at the end. So he was able to say, okay, yeah, they scored 100%, they scored 50%, whatever. They were competent at the time of testing. But the challenge was that two weeks later, or three weeks later, or indeed a semester later, they did an assignment, the students did an assignment, and then their plagiarism went through the floor. They plagiarized to their heart's content. So we wanted to see, was that the case? Was it just anecdotal, or, or is that actually the case? So it's um, looking at the long-term impact of our training, not the uh, impact at the end of the session, where you just do those quizzes, or you send around the happy sheets, and they all say you're great. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that, that's Jack, that's what he does. <clears throat> what we did was we used uh, Moodle, I want to show you the activities that we set up for our students, the plugins that we used to, to, to do it, and the activities we used were a Moodle quiz. We also put in uh, the Articulate Storyline uh, story file, we put it in as a SCORM object. So we asked the students to do the, the uh, Storyline, when they'd done it, it revealed the quiz, right? <coughs> so in terms of activities, that's, that's what we did. We also had a feedback uh, session there to uh, gauge feedback from the students on the resources. But we had two plugins which we developed um, last year and, and how we use those plugins is important because Jack supports a whole load of, of lectures, a whole load of different modules, and he would give the storyline to every single lecture give the storyline file to it. And they, maybe, would put it into their course. He, he never had an idea whether they did. They may have told them they did. But he also, over time, would, based on feedback he'd be receiving, he would want to modify this and, and, and update it. So then he had an issue with version control because he didn't know who had the most up-to-date version of it. So what we did was we built a plugin which is called a sub-course plugin. And we created a Moodle page, and it had all of these resources on it, um, the SCORM objects, and the lecturer then 
could within their own course, so within Business 101, could go to add an activity and they would find the sub-course option. And when they choose the sub-course option there, they then would be able to point towards Jack's course on referencing or another central resource that we had. And what happened, it worked like an internal LTI, if you're familiar with uh, LTI links. We linked internally to one of our courses. It automatically, that created a link on that Business 101 module. And when the students clicked on it, they were automatically enrolled in Jack's course. And then when they completed Jack's course, and was based on activity completions, the whole series of things, it sent the grades back to Business 101. So that was the first thing we were able to uh, take advantage of the activities in one central place. And um, Jack had all the statistics on who was using it in various different modules and programs. But the lecturer was able to use this as formative or summative assignment if he or she chose. <clears throat> the second thing we did was, um, I mentioned in the previous session, we built a marking guide report. And the marking guide report takes each of the criteria that you have, criteria one, criteria two, criteria three, and displays an Excel spreadsheet or an online spreadsheet, which you can download in Excel, but an online sheet in, in Moodle that will provide the list of all the students' uh, names uh, down the side and then the, the criteria across the top. And it gives you a breakdown of what they've scored in each criteria. So that allowed us, we went to, to, then to a lecture and we said, can you put in the marking guide uh, for your assignment? You're, when you're submitting the essay or when the students are submitting the essay, put in the marking guide and use that and one of your criteria, please let it be for citation and referencing. So then it's not that we wanted the mark for the assignment, we wanted a mark just for citation and referencing. So we used the sub-course plugin and the marking guide report to analyze specifically what we were at. And as I say, that's as simple as the course looked at. Let's cite, let's cite quiz. And um, actually, I didn't take a capture of the feedback bit, um, but that's as, as simple as the course was. And <coughs> the plugins that I mentioned, because they generate the reports, we were able to, to pull out that data and map it then to the student scores in Jack's course. So this is where the bad news comes, right? <coughs> So the bad news was we compared the students, and just to, 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 to show the, the grades, um, <coughs> the grades they got in the library test, so those that scored 100 out of 100 in Jack's test, those that scored somewhere between 75 and 99, somewhere between 50 and, and 74, and indeed somewhere between 0 and 49. We just broke down the figures like that. And then we gave them, uh, so this was Jack's test, and then these are the results that uh, how many of them in the post uh, test, so in the lectures assignment, right, how many of them scored well in, or not well as the case may be, in, um, in the, for the plagiarism score. And the difficulty we've got, and if we ignore this table just for a second and just move straight up to the comparison chart, you will actually see we got a spread of marks. We got a spread of marks, those that, that uh, scored 100, so they, um, well, for, they got full marks available for, for uh, the plagiarism bit in their essay, the scores in Jack's test ranged from 37 right up to 100. Those that didn't even do the test, didn't even do Jack's test, scored a range of, um, still scored highly on some of the tests. And indeed, if we look at the bottom side, those that scored zero, so they actually bombed when it came to the, the essay and, and uh, scored very low for plagiarism in the essay, still managed to score 100 in Jack's test. So it's totally, totally disheartening. But what we're doing now is we need to look at that data. And I firmly believe, I go back to one of my opening statements, the stuff that library staff do on our team is absolutely brilliant. But I think we need to revisit our approach to, to, to the way we go about it. I think we need to revisit the way we evaluate it. And um, <coughs> what we're going to do, one of the, the issues that we, we came across was in the marking guides the, the person had the option of scoring zero for plagiarism, one for plagiarism or two for plagiarism. So if they um, were properly cited stuff and properly indexed stuff, they got a two. And if they only did it halfway, they got a one. If they didn't do it at all, they got a zero. <coughs> the problem that we have with that is then that boxed our results quite close together and it was quite hard to accurately analyze the, the uh, figures. And of course, we didn't have a before and after. It would have been really nice if we had them submit the assignment before they'd done the library training. Um, 
but then again, we'd end up with pedagogical issues with that, where you're saying, like, oh, well, we're not going to help you, and then we're going to punish you for it, and then we're going to help you. So we need to, to rethink the way we do these things. Um, and also what we want to be able to do is not just one module. We want to be able to see, are they doing it properly in all the modules across the program? So actually get every lecture to have a criteria in their marking guide for citation and referencing. We're doing the same, just this particular presentation is on citation and referencing. We're doing the same for group work. We're doing the same for communication, where we're planting them across in the marking guides for us. <coughs> so we can get a picture of the graduates that we have on our course and whether they're scoring well or, or indeed not so well in all of those different things. But that's it. We tried it, but it didn't work. We tried it, but it didn't give us the results we wanted. I don't doubt for a second uh, the value of Jack's work and, and, and all the stuff he does with his team, but our analysis or the way we taught, we would actually uh, determine the impact. I just I don't think we worked. Okay, so thank you. Any questions? Comments? Yes, hold on. I'll come over here. Oh. Hi, thanks for that. Um, I wondered if we could go back and look again at the slide with the marks on it. Yeah. Um, and if you can help me interpret my figures, that would be great. Yeah. Da, 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 da. yeah. So I was a bit confused. You said that they either got zero, one, or two for their referencing. Yes. Yeah, so they scored. How does that work out on the on the chart? <coughs> so they either scored zero, fifty percent, or one hundred. Right. Sorry, that's the, uh, that was the percentage side. We, we so the people who scored one hundred percent did the best on referencing. This, well, the people that scored one hundred percent on the. Um, People who scored 100% in the essay for, for plagiarism, their marks in Jack's test ranged from, I don't have a pointer, do, do we have a pointer so I can call up? Anybody have a, a, No, that's just a clicker. If, if I can draw your attention just to the top line of the, the, the uh, graphs there. So the people that scored 100% full marks in the essay for plagiarism, they did it, or for citation, they did it right. But in Jack's test, they scored from 37 the entire way across to 100. Does but that make you've sense? Got, people there's 49. Yeah, okay, yeah. I get what you're saying. So people who, these are the people that uh, did very well in the lecturer's assignment and, and cited properly. But one of them, right, ended up, even though they did really well in um, the assignment, they only got 40% in Jack's test. And this person got 45 in Jack's test. And this person got 55. This person in Jack's test got 100% in Jack's test, but got no marks in the main assignment. Yeah, Just I get it. Yeah. Not even a quantum of solace. Yet. Not even a quantum of solace. <laughs> oh, thank you. Are they there counting them? No. Can I add mine together? Because I don't know. Huh. Mark, is that yes. subcourse plugin um, available? Yeah, Shared. if you want it, yeah. It, 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 it helps us issue out central. Um, central material, central training material like that, and it allows us to, to monitor the effectiveness of it as we go through. So, and that's, that's what we want to do. And it's available, yeah. is it? Right. Contact uh, Gavin, actually, if he's, if he's not here, but contact Gavin. He, has, he made it for us. Is it in the Moodle plugins database? Yeah, is it in the is Moodle it, plugins database? Is it in there already? Uh, it is, yeah. I, have, I think Tim's doing a quick search. We may be able to do that. But if it's not, I'd, well, you know Gavin, so just give him a shout, yeah. It is there. Excellent. There you go. Subcourse plugin. I don't know where that voice was coming from yet, but that's what it's called, subcourse plugin. And any feedback you could give us on that would be very appreciated as well. Okay, I think it's time for coffee. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah,